system, niggas can't get rid of me. Picture me backing down from niggas that's further away. One up a cut, and I watch you levitate. Two pieces of man, then I watch you dissipate. Saw the worth to God, the nigga you love to hate. We back with another edition of the Swag Science. We got a light heavyweight unification bout this Saturday between Bernard, the alien Hopkins versus Kovalev, the Crusher. It's a real good, solid matchup. We got a, a crafty boxing technician versus a seek and destroy puncher in Kovalev. So, you know, it's real good style class. Now, first off, you know, Hopkins, Ageless Wonder. Uh, he feasts on guys of uh, Kovalev's style, meaning, you know, he knows how to defuse a puncher. You know, every time we get a, a good puncher flavor of the month, you know, Hopkins finds a way to fight these dudes. To his credit, you know, you gotta give him props because dude is 49 right now, and he's still doing it at a high level. You know, I can't stand this uh, dirty fighting ass, but you gotta get a man his props. Kovalev, you know, he's that uh, new flavor of the month when it comes to seek and destroy opponents. You know, we get these in like every division every now and then, and right now it's Kovalev's turn. Uh, you know, Adonis Stevenson, he ain't really been doing too much this year. So, you know, these two guys, they stepping up. They making the fights we want to see, so shout outs to both dudes. Now, as far as the matchup itself, Kovalev hasn't really fought anybody like that that really made me want to get behind him in this matchup. I mean, he has real good knockout power, decent speed, the skills is solid. I think he could improve on his defense. I don't like how he goes straight back whenever someone steps to him or punches deep into his uh, guard. He got dropped in his last fight because of that. You saw him uh, get hit a couple good times against uh, Segrit uh, Agnew. So that's a big flaw I see in Kovalev's style that I think someone of uh, Hopkins' skill level and nature will be able to exploit. And it is real interesting because I think Hopkins still has to fight a perfect fight in order to beat Kovalev. Because Kovalev has a type of power where, you know, he's touching you. He's not really throwing any bombs or haymakers, but he's hurting dudes. And we don't know how Hopkins, who has a great chin, we don't know how he's going to react to that. One thing I like in this matchup is Hopkins... He has the, the edge and athleticism and ring general shit. And he has a speed advantage as well. Because most of the time, you know, Hopkins loses to guys that are highly athletic, got speed, and got some decent skills. Look at the uh, Roy Jones Jr. fight. You know, that's obvious. Um, Jermaine Taylor was quicker, more athletic. He gave Hopkins some problems. Well, a lot of problems. Fuck that shit. He beat him twice, so he, he gave Hopkins some problems. Um, Kawasaki, same thing. And, you know, John Pascal, same thing. To a lesser extent because, you know, he did get a draw in one of those fights. So you see what I'm saying here. But guys like uh, Trinidad and Pavlik, guys who are like, plotters. You know, Trinidad was explosive. But, you know, he still had that same type of seek and, seek and destroy style that Kovalev had. It just Trinidad is just a way better at better at doing it. He's a much, much better fighter than Kovalev. He's also physically smaller. So Kovalev really just has the youth and the power on his team, you know, on his side. And I don't, I honestly don't think that's enough. I needed to see more. You know, because we all know Hopkins is going to hit that wall where his age is going to be a factor. And we don't really know when that's going to happen. Now, a fight that gets overlooked, when we talk about Hopkins' uh, recent string of success after losing to Chad Dawson, who was another guy with skills and real good athleticism, is the Cairo Murat fight and this guy was really pretty much a nobody 
And, you know, he was working Hopkins. He made Hopkins fight, you know. He wasn't thinking too much. Even had his limited skills, he had guts. And he came in there, he was landing and throwing all types of punches at Hopkins. Uppercuts, short hooks, overhand rights. He was getting hurt, I mean, he was getting hurt, hit with a whole bunch of shit that Hopkins was throwing. But, you know, he made it a good fight. And Kovalev has to do that. Kovalev can't try to outthink Hopkins. He has to go in there, react, take the fight to the older man. And I'm sure his trainer, uh, Jackson, knows that. And they need to have some type of strategic blueprint. But it should be open-ended where they could always improvise and do something if something doesn't work. Or Hopkins figures this out, they need to do something else. There's one thing I don't like the backing up straight. And I don't know if Kovalev's stamina is enough to really see him really punish Hopkins toward the later end of the, of the fight. So we still have some question marks on Kovalev. Whereas Hopkins, we only just have one. And that one question is, can Hopkins still do it? You know, because this is one of those fights where, you know, I'm not a fan of either guy. I just want a real good fight to watch. You know, I think it's 50-50. I think it's a toss-up. I think Kovalev could surprise us and land something real significant that could change the course of the fight. And I think, I, I think Hopkins could also take whatever... Punishment cover the dishes out and stick to his game plan and I'll box the younger man. You know, it's just that there's too many question marks around Cobra now. And I'm the type of dude, you know, I like punchers, but I gotta see more of an upside than just a guy being a power puncher to win a fight. And that's all I really see in Cobra I don't see. The skill level of a, of a Golovkin in Kovalev. I don't see the little technical things that Golovkin does. You know, he parries punches, moves his head, walks you down. You know, he goes to the body. I don't really, I don't see that couple there. You know, maybe he hasn't faced the type of opponents yet where we see him kind of think or have to react and do different things. Cause you, you rarely see Kovalev counterpunch either. You know, he's one of those wait till you're done type of fighters. But a lot of times, people don't, you know, come at him in that way. So we always see him go forward. But the rare times we do see him back up, it's because somebody, you know, you guessed it, attacks him. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens when uh, he goes against somebody who's going to approach him intelligently, not scared. And really just try to fight to get his game plan going. So as of now, I think Hopkins beats Kovalev. I think he takes him to school. I wouldn't be surprised if he loses. You know, like I said, it's a close 50-50 fight. But I just haven't seen enough in Kovalev to make me think he could beat a guy like Hopkins. But, you know, we've seen upsets this year. So anything could happen. But I'm going to go with Hopkins by a decision in a fight where he might have a few scares but hey you know this is boxing anything could happen so Hopkins by decision that's the swag science I'm out one